who's that mysterious romantic figure? Sidney Thurston. Good morning, California. I'm Lieutenant Pugh, Mr. Bunce. I'm the police department's liaison with private investigators. How you doing? Please look at the camera, sir. Let me give you my profile on the Los Angeles P.I. He's a hump. Often as not, he's a bust-out cop like yourself. Please, sir. He nurses his car through the Rockies, takes a state exam that a monkey could pass, rents a toilet with a Beverly Hills postmark, and starts being a pain in my neck. How's this work, Lieutenant? You talk to your shifts over? Excuse me? Well, what happened? You screw up a case, they stuck you behind a desk doing liaison, now you passing the misery along? You know why your license is pink, Mr. Bunce? Is it your favorite color? Because it's temporary. 30 days from now, you're going to come back in here, and you and I are going to review your status. Great. I'll put a big pink mark on my calendar. We're done for now. Fun guy. Arthur Murray, 9.30. You're still in your Dr. Dentist. I know. I gotta get my travel alarm fixed. Norm, you got a message from a James Montaigne, Montaigne Investigation. Let me see that. He wants you to meet him in the park by the Beverly Hills Hotel. I think that was on one of those lifestyle programs. This could be money. You know... Norman Bunce. Hey, whatever happened to Knock Knock? I didn't think a business premises required knocking. What's the problem, lady? My name is Rebecca Griswold. I have the office down the corridor. And shall we start with Kid Gomez here waddling around the corridor in his bathrobe? The name is Thurston. Sydney, ma'am. And uh -huh. this is a memento of working a great prize fighter's corner before he was unjustly incarcerated. Or the puddles in the corridors, or the cooking smells coming from this office night and day, or the music. I mean, are you actually a detective, Mr. Bunce, or is this just a cover for an unlicensed flop house? No, I'm actually a detective. What do you do? Crack wise for a living? Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm a writer. I write for film and television. Jeez, let me call entertainment tonight. Mr. Bunce, I have tried to live and let live, but I have to draw the line at petty larceny. Your friend here, I think, stripped a tomato plant in my window box last night, probably for one of his spaghetti sauces. Hey, Miz, who are you peddling that story to? Ronzoni Fairy Tale Theater? Look, he's just visiting a few days till he goes back east. I'm letting him stay here in my office. Where are you sleeping? Your car? No, I got a residence. Listen, I got a snoring condition. Some people find it distracting. Well, you just shut up, and if you'd let me finish my freaking thought, I'm trying to tell you that he's going to do better. I'll make sure of that, and that way you can mind your own business. What a welcome prospect, Mr. Bunce. Back to the office concept, away from the communal and the YMCA. Have a nice day. Uh-huh. Attractive legs. Do not boost her tomatoes, Sid. Oh, come on, Norm. How did I know she was a control freak? Counting every little lad's vegetable? Go to work, huh? Yeah, another day's window-washing drudgery. I'm thinking maybe I should call in sick. I found 12 bucks in my other pants. 12? Well, you're set for life, huh? Hey, wait a minute. Montaigne Investigations. Jimmy Montaigne? Not a Hill Street cop? No, he's a cop from Polk Avenue. Now would you go to work? Right, Polk Avenue. Now I remember him. The guy popped me once on the deck of mall for unlicensed jewelry sale. But also, he decides to administer a hearing test in the alleyway with a big stick. What? Go, Sid. Oh, what a shot. Go on, get out of here. I can't hear high notes of any nature. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't call the shots anymore, kiddo. You don't get to tell me what to do. 
Well, if you're trying to scare me, it's working. Excuse me, is there a men's john on this floor? Uh, yeah, it's uh, around the corner over there. Thanks. Um, pray you never get a prostate. That's not what I want. It was never what I wanted. Okay, I'll never scare you again. What the hell is going on in here? It's called a reading, Mr. Bunce. Look, would you please just get out? Uh, don't you put a sign on your door? People inside being stupid. Probably too much to hope that's in your script. This is great. I gotta find my way out of here. Take me four days. I can't find no people. Trees. Well, come on. Look here, finally, a human being. Hey, hey, buddy. Park by... Yeah, right. Don't stick your finger through your brain or nothing. Hey, yo, ma'am. Hey, park by the Beverly Hills Hotel. Hey, yo, ma'am. Thanks very much. Hotel from here, huh? What do I take, uh, oh, Maple there? Uh, no, no, hey, yo, no, 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 man, no. Hey, 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 hey. The veterinarian wouldn't even read the article. I don't understand the logic. If a 600 pound man can get his intestines stapled, why can't they staple a cat? First, widowhood. Now I'm going to lose Greystoke to obesity. Well, I would gladly trade the $12 million if it would help save this cat. Do you have two of those? Yes, talk to you later, Sale. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. I'm your window washer. I'm sorry, but I just have to ask. Would you by any chance know the parentage of that cat there? No. Well, his papers are somewhere. My late husband handled all of our documents. Oh, I see. Um, sorry for the intrusion. Oh, the young man. Why do you ask? Oh, well, it's, uh... Well, Miles Thurston, my identical twin, did pioneering work in eating disorders with animals. And your cat has an uncanny resemblance to Thimble. Thimble? Thimble was Miles' breakthrough animal, proved his theories were correct. It's, uh... May I sit down? Oh, please. Thank you. Look at that. Same striping, the, the same weight difficulty. Uh, they could be from the same litter. And your brother was able to uh, help this other cat? I would say so, yes. If you call a loss from 33 pounds down to seven, help. Young man, I want you to call your brother this instant. I want to hire him to treat Greystoke. Well, Miles is always up in the hills gathering herbs. He's I a tough guy. I have to reach this man. Well, if you're serious, I could search him out personally, have him come over and pick up your cat for treatment. Now, the therapy does not come cheap. Money is not a factor. I felt that in my heart. Oh, Greystoke, we have hope. Yeah, there's a spelt little feline hiding in there, isn't there? <laughs> Sorry I was late, Jimmy. I got lost on the way over. Well, Mr. Feinstein and me were about to send the St. Bernard's out for you, Norm. Have a yogurt. Looks yummy. Are we all on the same page? Which room is this painting in, Mr. Feinstein? It's hanging over the waterbed. And when's Miss Dupar usually out of the apartment? Uh, Norm, today is the anniversary of when they met. Mr. Feinstein liked to have this court order served today, regardless. I empty out that apartment while she's there. You're gonna get some opera, Mr. Feinstein. I'm an opera lover. 
Maybe we ought to discuss the purpose of this visit some more. Norm. Is this why we had this meeting here in the park today, Jimmy, huh? No one hears us talk about a slap around. Andy, two minutes, please. Norm, can I see you? No, no, let's stay one happy group. Mr. Bunce, my office has frequent occasion to employ private investigators. Mr. Feinstein's law firm is one of my biggest clients. So why don't you do the work? I'm overbooked at the moment. Look, you're covered. You enter, you execute. Let the bitch's personality take care of what happens next. It's no good. I'm turning down a case. Wait a minute. I don't understand this. You get a blood transfusion from a Boy Scout? Hey, Norm, I remember when you were putting perps on the hood of your car. That was perps, Jimmy. That's not uh, doing muscle work for some jerk whose girlfriend finally got smart. Oh, then I misunderstood. You must be drowning in your own casework, right? That's why you can pick and choose. Hey, Bunce. You're walking the wrong way. Unemployment's over there. For the sake of discussion, let's say that it's enjoyable to stuff your face. It's one or two minutes of pleasure. What about afterwards, Greystoke? I mean, What's the fair trade on two minutes pleasure if afterwards you're walking around saying, I'm a fat piece of crap? Why all the strategy, Mr. Bunce? Why not just kick it in? Hey, I'm sorry about busting your door down this morning, all right? Find the bill in your mailbox. Messenger service, huh? Gee, guess you really are a detective. Yeah, I guess your writing career ain't exactly up there with Dr. Seuss, huh? Your favorite author, Mr. Bunce? Now, I'm gonna demonstrate a simple thing. No. No. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, but just now, I'm not hungry. No, 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 no. Get in here. Get in here. No, get in here, dear. Hey, hey, Norm. How you doing? How things go with Montaigne? No problem. Oh, yeah? What, did he have a case for you? You got a lot of questions, Sid. How about you answer one for me? When are you gonna get out of here? What? I mean, that sightseeing list here is all those things you were going to see before you leave. I thought I saw check marks next to all of them. Knott's Berry Farm I didn't go to yet. Chavez Ravine. And who is Dr. Miles Thurston? Oh, that's nothing. That's, that, that's, that's just a little sight sum I had See, because whatever it is with this new scam with this Miles character, Sid, and all these signs here are you moving in. That ain't going to make it. Now, thanks for sharing with the driving coming out, but now let's move it along. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. Montaigne, huh? He didn't give you work. You see, I knew the guy was a tube stick. He had work for me, just nothing I could do and still shave. Maybe I made a mistake coming out here. Maybe I sold myself a bill of goods. Oh, Norman, fresh starts are what California's for. It's all gonna happen for Bunce Detective. Yeah, you ought to see the fresh start Montaigne's got. He's some kind of mixture of goat puke and fruit. No kidding. Which is also how he dresses. Somebody around this joint has got an angora cat. Why? Why? What's the problem? I'm allergic. I get breast shortness and hives. Oh, no, this stuff's all gonna get here. Yeah. Hey, Norm, are you all right? Yeah, I just need some water. Is this helping? Mm. How's the water? Is that better? Where do you get off serving me with legal paper? You owe me $2,000, Mr. Chet. Hey, it sounds like that girl. Oh, goes out here. That's a famous writer's workshop oh, that her acting out a scene. Hey, geez, Norm, I don't know. Hey. Temporary situation, Greystone. Don't get claustrophobic. What happened? Well. You creep! There he is, folks! You owe me two thousand dollars, you creep! He did this to you? He wouldn't pay me for my script. Right. Call 911! 
Rebecca, are you okay, miss? Oh, it was a stupid story idea. Horror condo. You'll be absolutely fine. I'll be back in a minute, all right? Just gotta go uh, release the pet. Bozo broke Miss No Talent's door this morning. Hey, you got some unfinished business with Miss Griswold, Ronald. Your agent now? I'm representing her interests. <laughs> What's your commission? 20 bucks and a freebie? Here's 50. Tell her you couldn't find me. That ain't gonna make it, Ronnie. Now, you got two choices. A is you come back and you settle up with the lady. Or B, you could try and duke me out how you did Miss Griswold. Received a call, sir. You and the other gentlemen put your hands against the wall till we sort this thing out. Well, I don't know about the other gentlemen. Police business, ladies. Pass them back, Miss, please. Mr. Cheswick and Miss Griswold have agreed to a civil settlement, Lieutenant. She drafts her criminal complaint. He pays her three grand civil restitution for kicking her butt, plus the deuce he owed her for her writing. Sounds like happy endings for everyone, Mr. Bunce. I'm told the repairs on that restaurant may only take three or four business days. Hey, Lieutenant, I brought you a 517 plus. Save your cops court time. What's your beef, huh? Shortest lines are early morning. Jaywalking? Hey, Norman, forget about that. It's California. You don't have to pay those till you get a hundred of them. Man, no. You got one happy client here. It's gonna take Cheswick about 45 minutes to get your cash. Don't sign a complaint waiver till the dough is in your hands. Mr. Bunce, there's a matter of your fee. Oh, yes. Uh, in the hubbub, I don't think that was determined. Whatever's right. Uh, Norm, uh, Miss Griswold is an interested party. A thousand dollars? I'm kind of a novice in the whole area of compensation. Bring it to my office. I gotta get my car out of impound. Mr. Bunce. Yeah. You were great. And after I'd been so friendly. No problem. Hey, uh, just so you know, I don't usually bust down a door because I think somebody's reading the script. That stuff I heard in your office this morning sounded real to me. Mr. Bunce, right now, that is the nicest thing anyone could have said to me. Of course, I ain't no freaking Rex Reed. So, uh, Mr. Bunce will see you back at the building with that compensation. Hey, detective. Satisfied with your first day license? Isn't that okay? <laughs> no, I mean, Norm, I would like to know. Did Dr. Armin Hammer do a grand the first day he put out his shingle? 
I would like to know, what did Dr. Jerry Buzz have in his kitty? Sid, let's talk about you a minute. <laughs> hey, Norm, look at this. I think that's a, uh, what is that? That's a Portuguese man of war, Sid, right? Sid, Sid. I know, Norm. I know. I gotta be getting back east pretty soon, right? Suppose you got a place out here and went to work for me. Oh, no. Hey, you be rolling the dice. There's no guarantee I can set two plates. Oh, Norman! Take it easy. Norm, I could really help. I mean, the one club in your bag that needs work is self-promotion. And you happen to be looking at the Ben Hogan at that particular area. Okay, Ben. Where are you going? I'm getting cold. That's the afternoon offshore breeze. Meteorologically, very typical. Is that a fact? First thing tomorrow, Norman, I check the want dance for my own joint. You gotta do it, Sid. You got socks in every file. It's are. done. It's accomplished. Oh, Norm, I love L.A. And no scamming in the building till you leave, Miles. Total agreement in principle, but I would only like to say that I am presently involved in a therapeutic dietary relationship with a party that could really be out. Who's the party? It's an animal. It's a feline. A cat? Yeah, I guess, technically. Ah, oh, Sid, what's the matter Ow. with you, huh? It's done. Forget it. It's over. I return it to its mistress. I nearly herniate lifting it anyway. I just got through telling you no scamming in the building. It's a truth. It's an armistice. No, I'm looking at these guys fishing right off the pier. They pull fish right out of the water. Next, L.A. Law is making a case for great television with a drama on a subject dear to the hearts of the partners. Money. The disclosure of an associate's salary blows the roof off the legal firm as if Wente threatens to quit. The shattering revelation could destroy Kuzak's and Grace's relationship. Later on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, join Johnny and his guest rock and roll legend Chuck Berry. It's all tonight.